Danny, we're here at Gearing in Birmingham and they've got one of your Metal X machines. But before we talk about that, just give us a little bit about Mark Forge, please. So Mark Forge, they came to the market maybe 2013, 14 with uh, a composite printer like the one behind you. Basically one in functional end use materials from 3D printing at an affordable price. Um, that's how they got into it. It's developed somewhat since then. And now we're looking at things like the Metal X able to produce end use parts straight off the printer. So the Metal X, I guess the clue's in the name, but tell us a little more. Okay, so it's basically a fusion between FDM uh, fused deposition modelling and MIM, metal injection moulding. So we take their raw materials, put it in a filament form and then use this layer by layer approach. We then switch back to their downstream post processing of a wash and a sinter to get us a dense metal part that's used for high end applications like cutting tools. So what materials can currently be printed on the Metal X? Okay, so it was first launched with 17.4 pH stainless steel, a lovely stable material to work with. We've now got three tool steels, ranging from a cold working tool steel through to H13, which we're printing here at the moment, and Inconel 625 for high-end applications for oil and gas aerospace, pure copper for electrodes, buzz bars, all kinds of elements. And then we've got some more materials in the pipe for the year ahead. So in terms of you know, Mark Forge, what's next? Always evolving. I think you're up to seven printers now. You know, what's next? So more software and inspection related potentially in the near future. So we're launching a product called Blacksmith where we'll have an integrated scanner in our composite printers or we'll plug directly into our software, scan our prints, give us inspection reports, but then from there go into kind of uh, self-teaching. So it will be able to augment your CAD and tweak it to be more accurate. Each time it prints, it will learn and be more and more progressively accurate. I'm here at Goering, like I said today, and they've had great results using your technology. Yes, I mean, the cutting tools, uh, I'll let Alan explain a bit more, but things like through tool cooling, um, new geometries that you can't manufacture, uh, all gaining things like additional cutting speeds, longer tool life, those kind of things. So Danny, we hear a lot about digital forge. What does that mean? Okay, so this is Mark Forge's platform or ecosystem, the blend of software, this cloud-based software that integrates with your processes, the hardware we've got here, which is precision hardware, much akin to a milling machine, and then the material, these end-use parts that come straight off the printer. So that blend of just print it, forge it, use it kind of scenario. So Alan, we spoke to Danny about the machine itself, but what we didn't cover is the programming, and I bet, I bet you're the best guy to ask. Well, to be quite honest, the programming is very, very simple. Uh, we use uh, SolidWorks, so uh, we use this to do our design of the, uh, the tool. From SolidWorks, we turn it into a, an STL file, um, into Iger software, mm -hmm. straight down into the machine, and away we go. A lot of people are talking about additive and 3D printing, but it's fair to say here at Goering, you're not just talking about it, you're actually doing it. These are real life examples. No, that's correct. Um, I mean, we first started off in um, 2019, early 2019, where we were just uh, using the plastic printer, printing just a simple tool um, for the customer. So from the plastic part, the customer could see uh, the one-to-one -one size. They could test it against the part to make sure there was no collisions. So from the, the plastic part, we go to the metal X where we uh, are actually printing the part, ready to be, uh, to be washed and sintered, as Danny has uh, explained. Once the part has been uh, sintered, um, we then have our tool ready to be finished as a PCD tool. So with the tool, we uh, braze our inserts, PCD inserts, we cut, we grind, um, grind the shank. Uh, this tool is now ready to be used. Yeah, and what you can't see there is that's just not like a steel shank tool. There's a lot there's a lot inside the honeycomb there. It's been lightweighted and you've got coolant channels to so possibly where you couldn't put them traditionally. Well that's correct. On the example that we've got here, this tool has got uh, internal coolant holes. So we've got a central coolant hole and we've got coolant holes exiting out to each PCD segment. Now the beauty of this printing is that it is honeycomb. So we are producing far lighter tools. We're producing tools that can be up to 40% lighter than a, prop, than a normal steel 
body tool. So producing these parts is all well and good, but have you had any field results, any case studies you can tell us about? Yes, well, the tool that I showed you earlier, um, the customer used to run a uh, carbide tool, uh, but now the PCD tool is lasting 30 times longer, so there's less downtime. 30 times tool, tool life, that's incredible. And obviously price doesn't really come into it when you're 30 times tool life, exactly. but I know they're very comparable anyway, the actual cost per part, uh, sorry, cost per tool is very comparable anyway. Yes, that's correct, yeah. So just, you're in charge of this department here at Gearing. How do you see this, this expanding? Is it getting more popular? Is the service becoming more popular? It is certainly coming, becoming more popular. Um, there was a um, couple of weeks ago, I'd done um, four tools for one customer. They were all on a printed body with uh, coolant holes um, to the center. So it's becoming more and more popular.